Hey everybody, how's it going? So in today's video, I'm going to be looking at what other add-ons in Chrome I use above and beyond Wappalizer to help my flow as a web developer. Now, this question was posed to me by a guy called Tyadraj Ty Butt. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Um, so I thought it would be a really good way to kind of show you what tools I kind of use above and beyond Wappalizer to make my job as a web developer a bit easier. Um, the apps I've got here, this is my personal computer. I have exactly the same ones on my computer at work in Chrome. And obviously all these apps can be found on the Chrome Web Store. So first things first, I use Adblock. I'm not afraid or ashamed to say it. Um, in this instance, on the BBC homepage, I'm blocking 13 ads. Um, I'm getting ads because I'm accessing the site from outside the UK. Um, obviously, I do have websites that I do access every day that I whitelist the ads on. So I don't block ads on every website I'm on, but you know I do block ads on most sites. Uh, it just helps my viewing of the web be a lot better. Um, if you haven't already downloaded it, I recommend you try it out. Give it a go um, and thank me later. <laughs> Jumping over to the next one, I use an app from a company called SimilarWeb. Now, SimilarWeb have a bit of software, I guess, running behind the scenes that can analyze traffic and analyze uh, what's going on behind the web, behind the scenes on a website. So in this instance, it's actually picking up bbc.com. Um, but globally, bbc.com is ranked 133. It's the 133 most popular website in the world. Uh, it's number 22 in news and media. And they got 425 million hits last month. Um, but why do I like to use this app by SimilarWeb? If I've come up with an idea and I'm coming up with a personal project or something, and I've kind of found something a little bit similar. You know what? I like to go and look at where the traffic is coming from. I like to look at where the traffic is based. Um, I like to see where that website is getting people from, sending people to. If it has a lot of traffic, does it have an ad network on it? It helps me kind of gauge if the idea I've come up with, not saying I'm going to use it and hopefully make money from it, but you know what? It could happen. And it also, just from a personal point of view, it's really fun for me to just kind of look at websites and kind of see what is going on behind the scenes, not in terms of the technology, but also um, where the traffic is coming from, how people are finding the site. You know, on this sources tab, people are coming mostly to the BBC directly. So they're going to the browser bar and they're typing in bbc.com uh, or they're searching for something on Google probably and it's coming up. The first link is a bbc.com uh link so it's really cool for me just to kind of sort of peek behind the curtain and kind of see what's going on behind the scenes um with websites like here for example bbc it's top organic keyword obviously is bbc um interesting to note here that avici it shows up the bbc shows up if you search avici so that's kind of cool now obviously the next app I use is Wappalizer. Uh, you can watch the video I made about it up here if you want. Uh, but obviously in this instance, I'm not gonna bore you. And if I'm just looking at Netflix, for example, I can see that their front end is in React and they're using Bootstrap in some instance on this page. Um, obviously Netflix is a bit of a, you know, it's a bit of an interesting site only because, you know, it, there's a lot of been written about it. They use a lot of microservices. They use a lot of Node.js. Um, but it's still kind of cool to be able to see that, you know, in some instance, they're using React and Bootstrap here uh, on their main page. Now, the next app I use, I'm going to be using it. Uh, <laughs> this is off my dog API video that I made that you can uh, check out up here. I'm sure it will be over in the sidebar as well. Um, this is an app called the Web Developer Checklist. And what it basically does is it looks behind the scenes uh, of your site as well and tells you all the things that you're missing. Um, to make your site as friendly as possible as it can be for Google mainly. Um, and just how friendly your website is as a website. Are you ticking off sort of industry standard stuff? Um, you know, does your site have microdata? Does it have a meta description in the head? Do you have a robots.txt file in your server, in your root file? Um, I mean, up to the day, you have a favicon. They're not stuff that is needed, but you know, it helps nowadays. If you look at every other site I've got open here on my tabs, there are favicons, you know. So this web developer checklist, if I'm building a more serious project or I'm building a project for a client, like a freelance project, I work with this one religiously as I'm getting towards the end just to see if there's anything I missed, if it's picking up anything that I didn't pick up on. 
Um, but good thing for me, this is giving me 100 out of 100 on Google page speed. <laughs> Mainly because it's literally just a little bit of HTML, a tiny bit of CSS, and I think three or four lines of JavaScript. But it's good to see I'm scoring 100 on this one. The next app I use is a one is a one is an app called Stack Search. Now, what Stack Search does is it shows you stack answers from Stack Overflow uh, or the Stack sort of Exchange network here on the right hand side of a Google results screen. So I just googled how to add a root in Angular two, and it's giving me instead of me having to go through and look through the results and find the Stack Overflow result because they're not always the first one. It's given me the stack, the number one Stack Overflow question, and it's given me the answer all here on my Google homepage. So for this instance, you know, it might not be the right. I might have to go in and have to might have to hunt around a little bit. But if I'm just googling how do I add a script to the head or how do I add jQuery to an HTML file, I'm not going to need to go in and search through Stack Overflow. I can just see it all here. So it just makes my time as a developer a lot quicker uh, I'm not having to go in and hunt around and search um, as deeply you know if I can find the answer and it will show me it right on the results screen of Google um, so I really like using this one uh, and finally the last three apps I use here one is called what font so what font basically uh, accesses the DOM of the site and you can just hover over any text on the site and it basically tells you what font it is this is mainly used when I'm looking for, you know, different fonts to use or sort of more interesting fonts. Um, it doesn't work 100% of the time, but it is a really like nice little way to see what styling and what um, kind of stuff is going through the mind of a designer, like a web designer, um, why they're using this text. So I can here see on the Guardian, Guardian Egyptian, Guardian text Egyptian web seems to be used uh, along the whole page. Uh, another one I use quickly is a color picker app. Um, you can basically just click anywhere on the page and it will give you the color and it copies it straight to the clipboard. Um, obviously you can also use the color picker inside the dev console on Google, but I just find this one easier because it's right here and it's right in my toolbar and I can just jump straight into it. And it's called Colorzilla, forgot that. Uh, and the last app I use is kind of a bit of a weird one. It's not really anything to do with web development. It's more to do with paranoia, I guess. Um, but this is the Facebook Pixel Helper that's actually provided by Facebook. And what it basically does is it can show you if a Facebook Pixel has been installed on the web page you're viewing. So I'm here on The Guardian, and it's showing me that The Guardian have a Facebook Pixel installed. That means that Facebook are potentially tracking me when I come to the Guardian, or when I come to the Guardian, they're reporting back to Facebook that I visited this page. Why is this important? Because with the whole sort of, you know, big thing going around Facebook at the moment, it's kind of cool to be able to browse the web and see what websites you're on are feeding traffic back to Facebook, are feeding information back to Facebook, so that when you do go on Facebook and you start seeing ads and you start seeing content, for either websites you visited or stuff you might have been interested in or kind of inferred to. So say for example, if I Googled holidays in Mexico and then clicked on a couple of sites and then you know the next day I go on Facebook and suddenly I've got ads for holidays in Mexico, I can use this app and I can see that when I'm on a website, it's giving data back to Facebook at the end of the day. So I can get a little bit of a better idea of what and where is you know tracking me along the web but that's just not really anything to do with web development. That's just me kind of just being interested to know who's looking at what I'm doing on the web, so to speak. Um, so those are the apps that I use for web development. Um, if you've got any apps that you use, then please leave me a comment uh, down below. I've also listed them out in the description. So if you want to click on them and go and download them, uh, I really recommend it. And if uh, you have any other questions for me, please leave them in the comments down below as well. Um, I think it's a really great way to keep making videos and until next time, thanks a lot for watching.